so I'm currently here and I want to be over there for filming uh, here if this video comes out with this bit in it we know I've been successful <laughs> oh oh Now you need to be over here too. So I got kicked out of the other side. Welcome to the new background. <laughs> I have severe boob sweat right now and I'm dripping with sweat and it's just gonna get worse the more you watch this video. So enjoy that part of things, but the show must go on. So today I'm gonna be covering 12 mistakes that beginner photographers make because you guys keep asking me how I get my photos and you really love what I do. And I've got to say, I really love what I'm doing right now too. So it's really fun to see me from a shitty photographer just a couple of years ago to someone I consider myself to be pretty good. I think it's down to knowing these 12 rules of photography and kind of working within the parameters and not going outside of that. These are kind of the rules you can't really break if you want to have great photographs. So I hope you guys enjoy this. But first, in order for me to continue doing YouTube videos, I must get paid. So here is a quick short sponsor message. I would like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Whether you need a domain website or online store, do it with Squarespace. I've been a happy customer of Squarespace for years now. Not only do they have beautiful designer templates, they are also an all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch or upgrade ever. Alongside award-winning 24-7 customer service, it's never been easier to keep track of your worldwide adventures. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Sorel to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. The best photographs that I've seen are very simple. Simplicity is key. I try to stick to two, three elements. And generally what I mean by that is me and trees or me, water, rocks, horse, mountains, grass. To me, these photographs are so simple and they communicate the message of the photograph ASAP, which is what I love. And then it also, on a side note, makes your Instagram look poppin' because everything's so simple and people know exactly what they're seeing when they come to your page. Very simple, easy to digest. <laughs> Head through horizon. It just doesn't look good. Either go down or go up with the camera and the same goes for poles. It doesn't look good when there's a pole or something coming out of a person's head. This is my example and this is how I happen to get rid of it. Don't recommend it, looks super fake, but I was like, meh. <laughs> If your highlights are too blown out, you will not be able to bring them back in post-production. I always shoot quite dark so that I'm able to bring back a lot of details in post-production, especially the highlights, because if they're too blown out, see a later photo, it just doesn't work. Yes, I am the queen of posed photos. I love the advanced selfie, as a lot of you guys already know, but you can get to a point where it's too posed and too fake and it just doesn't look good. So whenever I'm capturing my self-portrait, I put myself into a position that looks good, I know my body looks good, and then I try to make my face look as natural as possible to add that contrast of extremely posed to quite relaxed. There are definitely exceptions to this rule. As a beginner though, so many beginner photographers go down the path of too posed, so you have to find the perfect balance of posing and natural. It's really great to play out emotions instead of just mm, pose, mm, pose. For my boss shots, I always think queen, 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 as an example. I have heard so many beginner photographers saying that they don't want to edit their photographs and I makes, oh, it makes me cringe because this is probably the funnest part of photography to me. I'd say 50 to 60% of a photograph is in the editing because this is when you can bring out your own style, show what you like. If you just show a photograph without editing, oh, 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 panic, panic attack, panic attack. <laughs> Simple editing, even if it's just Lightroom presets. Mm. Weird filters, oversaturation, not saturated enough. That's the polar extreme of the not edited at all. And it's people that take it to the extreme. Just turn it back. Any of the filters within Instagram are not good. Unless they're like at five to 10% usage, everything looks bad. So do not take examples and advice from Instagram filters. You have to figure out your own style. Do not over edit as a beginner. The 
the sharpness of your focus point in your photograph distinguishes you from a beginner to an advanced person. If you're an advanced photographer, you always focus on the sharpening, especially around the eyes. For humans, you make sure the eyes are in focus because this is the wi blah, blah, blah. because this is the window to the soul. And if they're not sharp, not so good. For me, someone that's more comfortable with a camera, I do play around with sharpness and I take it out of focus sometimes because I like the effect of that. But as a beginner, try to get your sharpness on point. Basically, as a beginner, try to stick to the rule of thirds or shoot people centered because, because, because I think you have to learn the rules first before you break them. And you can't really go wrong shooting in center or rule of thirds. I just thought I would have to mention, I don't think anyone does this anymore, just in case though. Do not bring up all the shadows and create a HDR effect. Just don't do it. <laughs> it is so outdated. It's gonna make you look really, really, really novice if you do this. <laughs> Exceptions to this rule is minimalism photography, but basically if you don't have a subject, the photo is very dull. So if there's nothing that draws your eye in, uh, kind of boring. There has to be a focal point. So concentrate on that, whether it's a person, whether it's an animal, whether it's a tree, whether it's a building, give people something to look at instead of trying to work out what the image is about. It happens to all of us when we begin. We are so afraid we're not gonna get the shot that we just overshoot straight away. We get into the situation and we like, shoot, 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 shoot. I always go into the location first and I analyze everything around me and I'll walk around and figure out where the right spots are to take photos, where the lighting is good. I don't take out my camera for about five to 10 minutes before I start shooting because I need to know what I'm working with. And the more advanced I get, the less shots I need to take because I set up my frame perfectly. I love what I see. I get into frame and then I start shooting with intention. This is gonna to come with practice but if you can take a deep breath before you start shooting see what you're looking at and then BAM get that shot baby I hope these tips were super helpful to you uh, la, 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 la. do enjoy the photography experience make sure that you're chasing art at all times with your photography this is what photography is all about if you would like follow me on Instagram to check out my work and if you want to hashtag Sorella more on your next uploads on Instagram so I can check out what you're doing because I want to see your photography that's it. Peace.